Back in the month of September, the American President Barack Obama said that the US intends to destroy the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIS for short. Obama managed to assemble an impressive coalition against ISIS, including countries such as France, Germany, the UK, and even Saudi Arabia. But at the same time, the coalition lacks certain key players, notably Iran and Turkey. Furthermore, the coalition's military interventions have been so far limited to airstrikes. So just how feasible is the military intervention against ISIS and what will put an end to the transnational jihadist threat? My name is Shirwan and welcome to Caspian Report. Just one quick look at the media footages of the airstrikes and it gives the impression that the allied nations are genuinely putting an effort to combat ISIS. The airstrikes have certainly delayed ISIS for a while, but the reality however is that these airstrikes are in fact counterproductive in the long term and they mostly serve as a publicity stunt for the short term. Over time, ISIS will adapt to new guerrilla tactics and disperse their units and thereby render the airstrikes ineffective. The thing is, air superiority alone has never won any wars. The US and its allies are perfectly aware of the futility of the ongoing airstrikes. The reason they do it anyways is for PR. You see, the beheading of allied citizens by ISIS spread throughout the mainstream media like wildfire. The American and European publics demanded an answer and that answer came in the form of airstrikes. It's all about appearing to do something without really doing anything. And this isn't the first time that military intervention is used for PR purposes, nor will it be the last time. So, in short, the airstrikes serve no strategic or military purpose, but they do, however, have a propaganda value. If the US is serious about destroying ISIS, then the airstrikes need to be accompanied by land forces. The problem with this is that none of the US allies have the interest or the capability to deploy troops to fight ISIS. So what Obama is trying to do right now is to get the Iraqi army and the Kurdish autonomous forces to act as the operational land forces. But the Kurds don't want to venture beyond their own borders and the Iraqi army is incapable and unwilling to fight ISIS on its own. Even if for some reason the Kurds and the Iraqis contributed their land forces to fight ISIS, it would not make much of a difference. And here is where things get tricky. ISIS doesn't recognize the political border between Syria and Iraq, and their HQ is actually located in Syria, not in Iraq. So when the coalition members drop bombs in Iraq and stop at the imaginary political border with Syria, ISIS simply moves back and forth between the border thus rendering the airstrikes in Iraq completely meaningless. It's like trying to destroy an opponent by fighting in a third country. The point here is that even if the Iraqi and Kurdish land forces were willing to contribute their troops, fighting in Iraq is pointless. In order to bring about a military victory against ISIS, the military campaign must include Syria. Every player in the region knows this, and it's for this reason that nobody really wants to get involved. It is just too complicated with too many blowback consequences. Furthermore, fighting ISIS in Syria would also strengthen the position of al-Assad, and indirectly solidify Iran's geopolitical grip in Iraq and Syria. So you have to pick your battles. You cannot fight ISIS without indirectly aiding al-Assad and you cannot fight al-Assad without indirectly aiding ISIS. There is no happy ending here or some sort of morally correct option. So the question is, which of the two is a bigger concern?
because eventually a choice between the two must be made. And given the history of American politics, the leadership in Washington will be slow to recognize the contradiction in their interests. So it may actually take time for the US to make a concrete decision on this issue. The truth is, ISIS is now part of the regional Sunni fabric. And it is for this reason that the Turks, the Iranians, the Saudis, the Kurds and the Iraqis have no wish to waste their resources on such a complex and risky endeavor. So if not for airstrikes, what else should the US and its allies do? The answer is simple, but the reasoning is complicated. Do nothing. Do nothing, seize the airstrikes and withdraw. Let the regional countries act. Just because you have a hammer does not mean every problem is a nail. Despite all the hysteria over ISIS and their intentions and capabilities, ISIS is not a threat to the American homeland. It is, however, an immediate threat to the regional countries, especially to Turkey, Iran and Saudi Arabia. Just as ISIS manipulated the Sunni-Shia split, so too can the US influence the situation and turn the Sunni-Shia rivalry into a regional balance of power between Turkey, Iran and Saudi Arabia. Managing this balance of power would be more efficient than directly managing a conflict. Think about it, these countries are the ones in the immediate proximity and stand to lose the most from the threat posed by ISIS. And even though it's true that Ankara doesn't trust Tehran and Tehran doesn't trust Rijad and Rijad in turn doesn't trust Ankara, despite this mistrust, these countries do have a common interest and a common opponent. And that is how real coalitions are formed. They are the ones in the immediate danger and thus they should take responsibility for their own neighborhood. And the thing is, they will act. The moment the US seizes the airstrikes and withdraws is the moment you will see the leaders of Turkey, Iran and Saudi Arabia meet, shake hands and smile for the cameras. That is the moment the regional players will realize that they have no choice but to take on the responsibility and involve themselves against ISIS. But as long as the US and its allies continue with the airstrikes, it gives Ankara, Tehran and Rijad no incentive to get deeply involved. The reason that the airstrikes are counterproductive is because they gave the impression that the US is attempting to control the situation. So the Turks, the Saudis and the Iranians are sitting back and watching how it turns out. The most efficient course of action would be to seize the airstrikes, withdraw and explain that the responsibility falls on the regional countries. It's not exactly a noble or a fair solution and not everyone will be satisfied. In fact, many factions will feel abandoned and betrayed. But this is geopolitics, you cannot satisfy everyone and it doesn't have happy endings, only practical compromises and solutions. In the next Caspian report, we will discuss why the solution to ISIS lies with the regional countries and how the jihadist organization is a pawn in the geopolitical chess game between Saudi Arabia, Turkey and Iran. For now, I want to thank you for watching Caspian Report by me, Shirvan. So take care and sarol.